thank you so much for coming. It's great to see so many people here as usual. And this, as you know, is the last town hall before go live. So it's an, uh, it's an important meeting. So as usual, the health warning, we are being recorded. So if you do ask a question, be prepared to hear your voice um, on, the, on, the, on the internet. Okay, so this session is mainly about giving you the opportunity to ask any last minute questions that you have. Uh, the format that we're going to have is that I'm going to do a bit of an update and then really try and bust some myths. So Kate and I have been going around seeing all of the um, heads of school. Um, we've been doing lots of training sessions. Um, lots of our staff have been um, interacting with everybody right across the campus. And as part of those interactions, we've been asked some, some questions that actually um, have demonstrated that people have got the wrong end of the stick about certain aspects of the functionality. So the first part of this um, is to bust those myths, is to say what people have, have said to us and then tell you what the correct interpretation of the functionality is. So we'll be doing that first off. Um, but then the most important part will be for your questions. Um, I'm deaf as a post, so um, I've got somebody down here. We haven't got any microphones, so I've got somebody down here who will interpret, and also Bryony at the top, so between us, hopefully, um, I'll be able to understand the questions you ask. Okay, so look at that. Just four days until we go live. So we are, we're going live on Monday. That is a definite. Um, so it's only four days to go. So in order to get there, the team have been working incredibly hard. We've done a lot of long hours, a lot of overnight working, really burning the midnight oil. So it has been a very, very intense period. But we are getting there. Um, just to, to say that um, it has been a real roller coaster. Um, lots of highs when things have gone really well, but also lots of lows as well when we've come across issues. And that's, that's to be expected, particularly in an implementation of this complexity. But it's not just the Birmingham implementation. That, that will happen in any ERP implementation acro across the land. So there have been lots of, lots of highs and lows, lots of roller coaster moments. However, in terms of cutover, which is where we are at the moment, we're 71% through as of last night. We'll be further through today. Um, but as of last night, we're 71% through. Um, we are a day ahead, which is great, um, because that means we do have some contingency for tidying everything up um, before we do our enhanced smoke testing over the weekend in readiness for go live on Monday. So there have been many challenges during this period. We've, um, it's all about transferring the data over, migrating the data. There have been lots of data dropouts and we've had to put those in manually. We've also come across uh, defects that we weren't expecting. Um, but as I say, that's entirely to be expected. Um, we've worked hard and we've rectified many of these defects. Um, there is one outcome that I do need to tell you about, um, and that's around annual leave. Um, annual leave didn't, didn't, um, didn't work, didn't present itself in the way that we thought it would. And so what we've decided is that we're not going to launch annual leave on Monday, the functionality around annual leave. What we're going to do is we're going to leave it and launch it at the start of the appropriate leave year. So for academic and related staff, that will be the 1st of October. For, for, for support staff, that will be the 1st of January. So that means essentially, when you get to those dates, when you have your leave, you'll have your full allocation of leave and you'll start using the um, annual leave functionality from that day. So what does this mean? This means that we won't have to put in any retrospective leave into the system now. Um, that's, um, that, that, and, that, and we, as I say, we'll have a full leave count when we come to, um, for, for example, I will have my full leave when I come to the 1st of October. This means that what we will be doing in the interim is continuing in exactly the same way as we are doing now for annual leave. 
Um, so um, we will still continue the, um, the manual collection of data and that will determine the, any carryover calculation that you have. It will also um, be necessary to inform uh, payroll through the portal of any leave balances for staff who are actually leaving the university. But we, you all know that. That's exactly what we do at the moment. So that's um, been set, that information has actually been sent out in a, um, in a recent um, manager briefing. Um, there's going to be an email from, from Gillian going out um, tomorrow. So there, there will be more information about it. Um, so please ensure that you read the information, you familiarize yourself with that, and also that, uh, that you let your staff know about that. So, um, that de demonstrates that this is going to be a bumpy ride. I don't think you've ever heard us say anything other than that. There will be bumps in the road, there will be noise, and I think that annual leave um, situation sort of demonstrates that. But nevertheless, um, we will, we will um, be working hard to, um, to counteract that. Um, We've done over 25,000 tests in the system. That's an incredible amount of testing, but there's no way that we can drive out every single de defect. Uh, there's no way, th for example, that when we put the roles in that from the information that you've given us, there's no way that that's going to be 100% accurate. So there will be issues, there will be noise in the system at Go Live. But that's why we have what's called our hypercare period. And that is three months after go live, so in our case to um, early September, it's an enhanced period of, of care, that's why it's called hypercare. Um, the supplier, version one, will remain on site. Um, much of the new core team will, will remain, and we will be working hard to ensure that those defects um, are fixed in the system. And so it's really important that you understand that you're going to, um, going to um, come across these sort of issues, and it's really important that you understand exactly how they get reported, because we think that the, the, the first three months are going to be, as I say, quite noisy, but we will um, work hard to rectify those, those issues. With the best will in the world, we can't get everything right to begin with, but there are lots of... Um, um, situations in place to ensure that that is corrected. Okay, so just um, how, what, what, um, what, what are we going to expect on Monday? So it is go live on Monday. Um, we, I think um, there's been quite a lot of information about how you will get access to the systems on Monday, and that is through um, the icon that you will see um, on, on the screen, the new core, core systems um, icon. That will appear on your desktop if you have an, an ITS managed Windows laptop or uh, tablet machine. That will appear. You don't have to re-log back, log back in, um, it will appear. And it will appear from 10 o'clock onwards um, on Monday. Obviously, there are, you know, there's 8,000 users that we have to um, link up to the system, so we can't say a definite time, but it will appear as Monday progresses. If you're a Mac user um, or any other um, operating system, we will be sending out an email which has the URLs that you will need to log into. They're friendly URLs, they're very easy to remember, but log into them, bookmark them, and that will be the way that you um, access the system. Um, you can access the system from anywhere, from remotely <coughs> from anywhere, as long as you have signed up for the uh, remote um, access uh, two-factor two authentication service that um, ITS um, have put, put on. I know most of you do that because a lot of you work from home already, but if you haven't signed up for remote access, I would um, suggest that you do that fairly swiftly. And of course, there'll be lots of support. You all know that about the Canvas materials, but there's lots and lots of, um, of support on the new core intranet. So I um, suggest that you go and have a look at that um, in advance of, of Monday when you will actually be using the system for real. 
Okay, so on to the, um, some of the myths that we've heard um, in our rounds um, around campus. Um, as I say, um, these are all collected not just from, from what Kate and I have heard, but, but from, from right across the team. So, lots of um, uncertainty about how you access uh, the system. People have said, well, I need to fill in a form, don't I, to get, it, to get a access. People have also said, well, it's great if you're on campus, but if you're up, off campus, you can't, you can't get to it. Um, and people, I think, have been generally quite um, concerned um, about uh, accessing the system. But this is, this is all wrong. Um, it's actually going to be extremely easy. I've given you um, uh, details of how you do log in. It's going to be absolutely seamless. Um, in terms of the um, worry about having to complete a form in order to get access, that is not the case for employees. However, for associates, um, that is the case. And that's as has always been, but you will now do that uh, via Worklink. So, don't worry about access. Access is going to be really easy. Lots of myths around line management, and I think this is probably the area that we've had um, the most discussion about. Um, but people are worried um, that, or people um, want to know that they can delegate um, every aspect of their role to, to everybody else. And as, as I say, this has been one of the areas that we've had a lot of discussion about. People are concerned that um, you can see protected information, um, you know, your own personal information. Um, people have said, well, how... I, can I change the salary or the hours of, of my um, team members um, without any approval? Um, and also there have been lots of um, concerns around uh, backdated sick leave into the system. All of those concerns, guess what? They're wrong. <coughs> um, in terms of line manager, um, line manager is the only role that can be uh, delegated in the system. But it is an all or nothing <coughs> delegation. You can't delegate part of your role. You can't delegate approval to expenses to somebody and then another set of approvals to somebody else. It's all or nothing. Delegation is allowed, but it, if it, is, it comes with the, the caveat that that should only be when you are away from the university for a, a, a length of time. So annual leave, for example or for academic staff if they're on sabbaticals. And if, that, um, if you do wish to delegate your role, um, the, um, the, the advice that we've had from legal services is that that should be to somebody of a similar grade or a similar status to you. In other words, it's, you should avoid delegating to your PA. Now, the reason for that is twofold. Um, largely because um, if you delegate, the person to whom you have delegated will be able to see all of the contractual and salary information re relating to your team members. Now, it, it can be argued that secretaries, PAs, see that anyway because of the annual review spreadsheets. But nevertheless, they will have direct access into, those, into that sort of information. But also... This is about approvals. It's not necessarily about line management and stuff. It's about approving stuff. And actually, that's a management task. Um, and so in certain cases, it's not, it might not be appropriate that um, somebody of a lower grade is taking that on on your behalf. Clearly, in the system, line managers can't amend grade or pay or anything like that. And m some of the edits, like location or position title, um, have to be um, approved by HR. So it is a very contained and constrained system. And importantly, no one uh, except for yourself and for HR will be able to see any of your personal information or any of your um, protected characteristics. In terms of sickness, um, long-term sick people, members of staff, have already been migrated into the system. So the only thing you need to do with those, that category of staff is to enter an end date when they eventually return to work. 
In terms of other sort of sick sickness um, recording, um, it will be um, necessary to record that in the system from May onwards, because obviously that was during cutover. So you do have to start uh, recording sickness from May onwards. Okay, so payroll myths again, lots of these, uh, lots of concerns. Um, I've had, I can't tell you how many times I've had the question that, um, can my manager see my pay slip? Um, also, people have um, assumed that um, historical pay slips will be migrated into the, into the uh, system. And also, people have concerned that um, they won't be able to print their, their pay slips or save them. This, again, is all wrong. Um, managers will definitely not be able to see their team members' pay slips. Um, the only pay slip you will see on the system when you log in, when you've been paid in June, will be your June pay slip. There is no historical information. That will appear um, as um, our pay slips come out when we are paid on the penultimate working day of the month. Um, and you can go into it, it's very intuitive. You can go in, you can look at your pay slip, slip on screen, you can download it, you can print it, you can save it, you can do whatever you like with it. You can just leave it in the system and it will always be there. But um, there, there, there have been some concerns um, about, about that, particularly, I think, from um, uh, cleaning staff, um, from estates members, and that's where we've heard most of those um, concerns from. Requisitioning myths, and again, spent a lot of time on this, lots of meetings about this. <coughs> I think part of the concern has been over ordering um, hazardous materials. We've had um, long and quite involved meetings about this, and I think we've uh, come to accommodation, and I think we people who are involved with that, largely in EPS is, is where our, our main um, discussions have been. I think we've, we've managed to sort that out. But they are concerned that you can order chemicals without any approval at all. Um, another worry has been that line managers will approve requisitions. Well, clearly line managers won't necessarily know um, the details about um, the, the requisitioning, particularly if it's around hazardous materials, etc. And also there's been a lot of concern about students automatically being able to order um, catalogue goods under £500 without approval. All of that, may I say, is not accurate. Um, in terms of um, technical or hazardous um, requisitioning, there will be a two-pronged approval approach. If it's, um, and that means you have to have financial approval if it's non-catalogue, um, but also you have to have the appropriate approval that you've always had, you have to have the appropriate approval if it's hazardous. And that will be um, determined according to actually what you're, what you're ordering. We've had long discussions, um, as I say, with EPS. What they're going to do as a temporary thing, I hope, is that they're going to actually have some sort of paper trail around it. Because what you can do, which is what they've got now, but what they can do is keep that paper trail going and attach it to the requisitions so that everybody is absolutely clear what is being requisitioned. That is somewhat against the spirit of what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it uh, paperless. We're trying to make it more streamlined. But I think in the, you know, in the early stages, whilst we get used to the system, while it starts embedding, I think that's probably appropriate. And if it gives comfort to people, then let's, let's, let's do it. Um, items purchased from the catalogue will be auto-approved up to £500. That is true. But anything off that catalogue and anything over £500 still has to have approval. The approval is not the line manager. The approval will go down to the approval pools. They have been set up at college level. We have had lots of discussions about who should be in those pools. They are all now set up. And students are not auto-provisioned with roles in the system. 
There is one exception to that, and that is about 160 or so postgraduate students who we've looked at the Proactis system, we've got the data from Proactis, and they have historically ordered goods uh, for their research labs. We have provisioned them with that requisitioning, with that ability to requisition, but those are the only students in the system who have that ability. <coughs> Roles. Again, another, another area where it's taken some time for the correct information to, um, to get into uh, everybody's psyche. Um, I think people are worried that um, in the system we won't be able to change any of the roles or any of the line manager mapping that we do. Um, I think there are concerns about what those roles can see. For example, the health and safety coordinators. Can they see personal information, for example, in, health, uh, in occupational health reports? Concerns about that. Um, also around um, recruitment, um, there's been a um, concern that hiring managers um, will be responsible for collecting references. Again, you know, uh, more work, which is the, the thing that they've been worried about. It's wrong, that's not the case. Um, in fact, in terms of the roles, it will be possible to change roles. Um, you can um, request that um, a role is changed. However, there has to be some governance around this. And for that reason, <coughs> it will have to be um, the request to um, the, the post-go-live team, the <coughs> systems team, um, must be submitted either by the, the dupe, by the senior officer, or the, the OM or the, um, the business partner. So that is the, um, the governance around that. But it is possible, because with the best will in the world, we won't get it right on day one. And anyway, these things change over time. I think also there's the, there's the issue of, uh, particularly around line management, around it on, that's on a sort of micro scale. But on a macro scale, whole schools, um, Will they be happy with the structure that they have agreed um, to be um, put in place at Go Live? I suspect that some schools, um, some colleges, won't be happy. What we're saying around that is that give it three months, get to the end of hypercare, start using the system, see what the impact <coughs> of that of those line manager um, structures, hierarchies are. See how many notifications you actually get. See if you can put in place a system that works for you. If you can't, then what you can do is you can come to the core systems team and we can talk about changing that hierarchy. But we cannot do that and we're not prepared to do that um, from day one. Um, we've got to, all of us have got to um, live with this system, see, get experienced at using it, embed it and see how we go from there. So that's a really <coughs> important message. The health and safety role, um, all the health and safety role can see are incident <coughs> reports and risk assessments. They can't see occupational health reports or anything like that, so no, no personal information will leach in that way. And in terms of references, they will be collected, as usual, by colleagues in HR. And as it says here, for academic appointments, this is before the interview. Uh, for professional services, this is at the onboarding stage. Okay, so those are really the sort of, um, of, of myths that have been coming out. I hope that's given you some clarity. Those were definitely the, the main areas that we've had lots of discussions about. Um, when you have issues or when you have queries, the first place to go is Canvas. I'm sure all of you have, have been into Canvas and you know what a good resource it is. Um, that is the first pla pa pa uh, port of call. Then, of course, we are continuing our drop-in sessions. We were, we were putting on surgeries post-go-live and that's where we actually have booked out large computer clusters. You go in, there will be floor walkers there. You can say, I've been trying to do this and I can't do it. And they will actually sit down and help you. So they, those dates are, have all been organised. They're all on the intranet. I think those will be really, really good sessions if you're, if you're struggling. And of course, you've got your, your lovely super users, <coughs> all of whom have, have been trained. And as I said before, all of the information on the intranet. We'll be putting up things like, we'll be getting data from 
from the um, IT help desk where you'll be reporting defects or issues and we'll be getting data for those about the most common problems and we'll be putting information about how those common how, how to address those common issues so use that first if, if none of that works then then do go to the IT support desk um, Oh, that, that was, I've just said that. Do go to the I2 support desk. Um, it's, all, it, it, it's all there. And as I say, that's really important um, stuff for us because we will be, be collecting the data. We will also be having regular meetings um, for feedback purposes with the super users. So that's it. That's really what I wanted to say. Um, perhaps um, now we can um, have your questions. And I've got a team um, in the front. Um, who will um, help me if I can't answer any of your more detailed questions. But please do go ahead and shout, because I'm old. Thank you. Okay, so we will be using the uh, annual leave. This is the one exception to what I've been saying. So sponsored staff, tier two, not tier five, tier two, am I right? Tier Tier two will be um, <laughs> will be asked to put in their annual leave in the system. They are the only category of staff who will be asked to do that. Somewhat confusing, I know, but because of our obligations, that's what we're we're um, so asking we them to do. Yes, absolutely. It'll all be done through the system. So, yeah, yeah. The it makes an assumption that you're here. Yes. Or right, it's an absence. So you don't have to yes. have to fact to be proved that you're here. No, I mean, actually, it's a sim justification. Yes. yes. Or, um, it's actually saying you're relying on rep accurate reports of when you're not here, okay. as opposed to asking when you are here. So, and it's another final question. Yes. Of the pay slips, um, what's the process for authorising them? Because any of these applications have not, that you apply for them have not um, accept Yes, please, you can. If you need some kind of um, proof that you're an employee at the university, you can use the due diligence form through HR that confirms that you worked here. I know because the pay slips are going to require on head, um, and they specifically say you cannot bring a print out. <coughs> so if, in that case, you need to get in touch and we'll be able to work something out for that exception. I, I, would, I guess we just need to verify that it's an accurate pay slip. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So just authenticate that yeah. that's that's accurate. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's that's really helpful. So where will they find the de details about those sessions? Okay. 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 
So did everybody hear that? So if you're, uh, uh, if you're a sponsored employee or a manager of one, then HR are putting on specific sessions about how to use the new functionality. So that's important to, um, to go to those to get it right. No, no, what we're um, asking you to do is to continue your manual um, monitoring up until the start of the new year. Um, you will then, that will enable you to cal calculate your carryover, and I think that we allow up to five days carry over in the system. Yes, yes, they will, um, but they will include car parking charges that have occurred over cutover. Okay. So there will be a catch-up period, but they will start from, on the system from um, from June. You'll start being charged, but they will there will be a catch-up period. And does that cover cover other salary sacrifice as well? Like yes. Well, um, I suspect that the, the, so the PI will be in that approval pool. Okay. And so these, this system does not stop a conversation. It shouldn't stop the normal conversations that people are having, you know, that they have now. It's just a different way of doing it. So they should be anticipating that they're going to approve that. Um, it, it, yes, yeah. But, but that's why we've had pools so that there are... Um, that there are no delays because other people, you know, again, another conversation can ask for them to uh, approve X or Y. So um, one myth we didn't bust, um, which is doing the rounds of the medical school, is that um, individual PIs who run research groups like I do see the account balances of other individual PIs who run other research initiatives. Is that is that true? Uh, that is true. In our colleagues that is. That is true within your college. And yes. there's nothing going to be done to address that because I can imagine that having a real long term fallout. Not as far as I'm aware, and <coughs> I'm interested to know why that, why why there's a concern there. Well, everyone's in, everyone's concerned about it because <coughs> so let's say in my school we've got 140 academic staff and maybe there's 30 PIs, and of course you know your status is. Okay, well, we'll, yep, yeah. Erica, would you like to respond? Well, actually, most of that information is already is available, available in yeah. formats, mm -hmm. so people, if they particularly wanted to see it now, could see it's, it, so it's not new, it's, not it's just going to be in one system. It's not available in the sense that I can't go and see, I, I mean, I, I couldn't envisage how I could find out. Well, the fact you don't know doesn't mean it's not there, it's just currently there. No, <laughs> it's I just couldn't, just you know, there. okay, so I've been there 20 years.
well, we will. Um, Kate and I have also undertaken to do another round of heads of school um, in three months' time when, as I say, we've got used to the system. So it will be very interesting to see if that issue raises its head more generally. Will Dubai staff? That yes, I'll um, let oh, Alice. Um, so, um, if the University of Birmingham police come to Dubai, then yes, they can sign their form to be the person of the security measures to access the system during the Dubai remote method. We do have colleagues working out in Dubai that are engaged directly in Dubai by a third party, and that can ease the scope of the project very late in the project life cycle. So, for those members. If, if they are employees, as Kate yeah. said, then they yeah. will be provisioned with that that ability, yes. They yes. have the same functionality. Yeah. I see. You will, you will be Okay, I'll take that away <coughs> and um, and speak to the staff. But yeah, non non staff travel claims are outside of the system. They will be using the same multi pass claims. Yeah. Well, that's what that's for us to. That's what I'm taking away. So I'll uh, I'll come back with some information about whether the, those uh, forms have changed. Still, I need to do FAQs for that. Everybody yes. Can have that. So um, all expenses will be approved by the line manager. That was um, a decision taken some time ago um, through our, in fact years ago, <laughs> through our requirements gathering uh, workshop. And as I say, it doesn't stop any of the conversations that you have outside of the system. So that your line manager should be um, expecting that. Also, the, f the fact is that um, all of the, um, the um, Maxima, you know, the, the um, mileage rates, etc., they're hardwired into this process. So, actually, it's very difficult. Um, you will get a warning if you've exceeded those. So, in terms of um, putting ineligible um, expenses down, which I guess is what the EU is, is funding is concerned about, that's probably um, catered for in the fact that, that it's hardwired into the system. <coughs> system works. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, how will um, procurement reach out to people who say we really would expect how to return by something we have at the moment? No. Because obviously okay. relying, the expectation is day one, we're back on. Yep. Hello. Yep. But we, we surely will have a bit of a backlog. So how will we raise their or deal with their Okay, so oh, I can ask Kate to answer that, although Jonathan might want to answer the more detailed bit about the backlog, but uh, Kate can answer about the SLA type issue.
given one thing another, a challenge to ensure that we build the cable end-to-end -end system with bottle size SLA service level B with you so that if you put through that requisition um, it has to be authorised within a certain time and then that will be converted to a purchase order and sent to the supplier within a certain time. And at the moment Jonathan and I are doing that and it's looking at about between three and five days turnaround. And as we go forward within this process and it embeds, we are hoping to put that to two days turnaround, which is what the other was with Luke University. So we are working towards that. There is a, a, a small backlog, which is going to be written and everything is being put over and Jonathan will answer that. But I assure you over the next couple of months, we will be publicizing those SLAs, we will be measured and we will have management information that we will publish to ensure that we are working towards those and meeting them. However, the other side of that is there is an OLA, which is an operational level agreement that states everything that we require to hit our SLA has to be on that requisition. So has it got a top sales centre? Have you put accurate information on it? You know, have you chosen the right suppliers? Does that supplier even supply very good? And if you put something through that says a box, we won't know what type of box, how big is the box, what quantity is the box, what cost is the box. Do you see what I'm saying? So you have to make it accurate for him to hit his side. But we will work together with you, because you're the customer, to ensure that we get that down to an acceptable and <coughs> agreed timeline. Is, are you, is that okay with you? Um, from go live on Monday, there's probably about a three day backlog. Um, although I think we're fairly confident that that should clear quite quickly. Of course, what we don't know is from Monday how much will be covered over um, because obviously that will depend. But we're looking to turn things around fairly quickly from go live. We're working over the weekend, so we'll be just putting test orders through. So those will be straight off to current batch module lists. So um, hopefully, you know, there shouldn't be too many problems. And obviously, if there's anything urgent in there, then we'll put it over separately and deal with that. Okay. So, uh, on the requisition, um, is there a process for reoccurring weekly services? As an example, for instance, in our college, we have dry ice. Yeah, we actually want to um, help and encourage people to make this as easy for themselves as possible. So you could do an annual call off order or something like that and have weekly deliveries. Um, and we'll help and support you with how that would look and what would work best for you. So I know with certain things where they've got a short shelf life and that kind of thing. But call off orders might be the answer for you. Is there a process consistent now to do that? Yeah, it just set up a, a big requisition to be delivered weekly. So that can be done easily. And going forward, when we look at what our expenditure is across Caterpie, we will be coming and holding workshops, Jonathan yeah. and I, that will tell you, if you are purchasing X, this is the best methodology of requisitioning, i.e. the call-off order, which we will explain to you now, or do we have to do reoccurring with the blanket, with all different types of requisitions, that would ease your load. So you might have to do it once a year. Just add the lines on and it would just automatically be delivered on the dates that you state it to be delivered on. That would help you, I hope. Fantastic. Anybody there that can answer that? No, I, I'll take that away. So my understanding is that you can drill down to transactional level. You can see the, the purchase order, which means you can see the person. 
So that might be a myth that has been perpetuated, but um, somebody is making a note of that question, and I'll come back. If you can, if you can give Nick your name, then we can make sure that um, we respond to you. Okay. You've coached fairly recently. Will the system catch up in terms of position and hierarchy, or will I need to be raised at um, when did you move? 13th of May. So that's something for you to look at um, on day one. Yeah. So the LEARN module, um, we um, have made a commitment to the university that we will implement LEARN. Um, it is a complex technical module. We certainly won't be in a position to even look at it before the end of hypercare, and depending on how noisy, bumpy it is, maybe six months. Um, then we will have to put a business case into the university to get the funding to implement it, but we have made a commitment uh, to implement it, so um, possibly six months, a year down the line. Um, well, we actually have a list of them, and they have been um, circulated to the appropriate um, ops managers. I think in uh, it's in the it's in the three um, laboratory-based uh, colleges. So, uh, the ops yes, that to yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more questions? No. Oh, yeah. Last one then. Uh, boxy. boxy. Yes, we will not be having boxy because all of the reports will be. Pardon? Except the research reports will come back a bit. Apart from research reports, um, but every every other report will be um, um, available from in the system. So Erica can say a bit more about the research. We're trying to access the historic research. All oh, right. Yeah. Some yeah. of the detail hasn't been migrated across. Some of it has, but it's not. There's no detail on the project at all. But some of the transaction detail. You Okay, thank you very much for attending. Some great art and some great questions. We'll get back to you with those um, those two issues. But thank you and good luck on Monday. <laughs>